What's going on guys? Mandy here. So I've been getting a lot of questions about my background as I just recently completed Chloe Ting's 2021 Flat Stomach Challenge. So I decided to make a video addressing that question of what is my background in fitness and food? So let's get right into it. So I am a Filipina and food has always been a huge part of my life. Um, if, it, if you know a Filipino, then you know that food is just a big part of family holidays, any type of gathering. So food has always been just like a focal point of my life, whether it is langanisa at breakfast with some eggs and rice or the full fledged uh, lumpia, pancit, all these great foods. So it's just definitely been a huge part of my life. In addition to being Filipina, growing up in my neighborhood, organic was the talk of the town. So basically everything in our house was organic. You know, all of our fruits and vegetables had to come from the organic section. And that was just like point blank period. That's what my mom did. But even as a little kid, my mom was very health conscious and she even went to the point of diluting my apple juice with water. So because I loved apple juice so much, my apple juice was like maybe a third apple juice and then the other two thirds was water. But she, she knew that that was the only way to, you know, reduce my sugar intake as a little kid. So let's fast forward a few years. Now I'm in high school. As an eighth grader wanting to play at the high school level, I was under 100 pounds. And the varsity basketball coach told me that to make varsity, I was talented enough at, and skilled as a basketball player. However, she felt that I was undersized to play with, you know, seniors in high school that were four or five years older than me at the time. And so she told me that the requirement to make varsity was 100 pounds. To get to that 100 pounds, I ate everything in sight. And my go-to meals were actually Dairy Queen blizzards and burritos, especially this place called Nico's in San Diego was my all-time favorite. Bean and cheese, always. But you know, being a California kid, California burritos were also frequently in the mix. So I also started going to the gym more during that time, you know, to put on some muscle to compete with those stronger players on the court. But being a high schooler, I wasn't taking the gym time that all that seriously. I was, you know, going to play and pick up, having some laughs on the court, some social time, lift a few weights, but end the night with a food outing with friends. Around the end of my junior year, going into senior year, I really locked into the idea of playing collegiate basketball. And to do that, I needed to, you know, make sure my lifts were going up and continue to put in work on the court. So I was, you know, eating a lot of food to make sure my, my numbers kept on going up on the weights. And I was staying late after practice to get in extra shots. This time when I was considered you know, bulky didn't really affect my body image. I was just so, so focused in on becoming a collegiate athlete that I didn't really care what my physique looked like. All that hard work in high school paid off. I ended up getting recruited at Smith College, a women's college in Northampton, Massachusetts, where I played basketball for four years and was a co-captain for two years. Um, my, my weight actually dropped when I first got to college. You know, they often say that you gain the, the freshman 15, but I actually lost a lot of weight. That's probably because in Northampton, Massachusetts, there is no Dairy Queen and no California burritos. So I was actually eating a lot of the um, food from the dining halls, which was actually cleaner and much better for me than what I was eating back home and had a car where I could just go to eat wherever I wanted. The dining halls, you know, served a lot of healthy options for athletes. They had a lot of chicken breast, um, a lot of whole grain pastas, 
salmon, ground beef, just a lot of like high protein meals. So now fast forwarding a few years, I'm about to graduate college. And I think this is a real pivot, pivotal point of my fitness and nutrition journey. At the end of my senior season, one of my closest friends convinced me to run a half marathon. And that was essential for my post-grad fitness life. It was really important for me to have that structure of a structured program for a half marathon training where it tells you like run this many miles this day this many miles and like on the weekend run your long runs and that was really great for me because before that i had someone tell me what to do for workouts since like before i could really remember working out like back in second or third grade so it was super important for me to have that kind of structure and i was very grateful to my close friend for getting me into running. Um, after running that first half marathon, I went on to run two more half marathons at, um, while working my first job. So my first job post-grad was environmental research and education at an aquarium and working with a lot of environmentalists and general animal lovers, there was many vegans that I worked with. And so I jumped on that vegan trend and was doing really well with it. I was cooking a lot for myself and enjoying how I felt. I was feeling really lean and my heart rate was actually really, really low because I just like, I guess all that clean eating. Unfortunately for me, being Filipina did not work well with me being wanting to be vegan. When I would go home for the holidays, it was really rough. My body just could not handle having all those meats in me after having that time away from them while I was trying out the vegan diet. So I ultimately made the decision for myself to, to stop being vegan just because food has always been such an integral part of my life and I didn't want to be apart from my family in that capacity. Now, do I recommend the vegan diet? Sure, if you can work it into your daily life, I totally support you and I, I think it works. However, just for me, for personal reasons, I chose not to pursue that and I'm okay with that. So let's fast forward to present day. Due to the pandemic, I've been getting super into cooking. I find recipes online in recipe books that have been given to me from family members and I see things that I really like or I'm interested in eating and I'm I'm motivated to, you know, add my own twist or flair either to make it taste better for me, but also meet my macronutrient goals. So getting enough protein in, reducing the carbs or the fats to fit my numbers that I'm working with. Right now, I'm the strongest that I have ever been. I am currently repping, not just like maxing out, but repping 125 on the squat and 95 on the bench press. And I'm super stoked about that because I haven't been to those weights. Well, definitely not the squat weights in high school, but the bench weights since high school, but I'm now doing that at a lower body fat than before. I currently love the way that I look. However, I have a growth mindset about my body and I want to continue to push myself to explore new challenges and see where my fitness journey takes me next. In terms of short-term goals, I have one that I'm really working diligently on and that is to squat 66 kilograms for six reps, which is about 145 pounds. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm participating in the Gymshark 66 challenge where I have pledged for 66 days to be working towards that goal. And I am, you know, halfway there. I am working, as I mentioned before, at 125. So every week I'm progressing a little bit further up. And so hopefully by the end of the 66 days, I will be at 145 pounds. My long-term goal is to continue to gain more muscle while keeping as much of the fat off as I can. And how I'm gonna do that is being in a very slow but steady caloric surplus and making sure that my lifts keep going up. Well, that's all I got for now. So if you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new and comment below if you have any questions 
or think topics that you want me to cover in the next video, and I will see you in the next one.